Hi there, my name is Jay with CompuMatter and with ServerMatter. The purpose of this video is to teach you, along with my future self, how to properly roll back using ZFS to a previous snapshot. Now, if you're using ZFS, then snapshots of your system should be regularly taken over time. And if a catastrophic event occurred, like a ransomware that left lots of nooks and crannies of uh, encrypted files on your server, uh, along with some of the intelligence that might have got it there to begin with, uh, perhaps it's been your developer and you've had uh, ruined some code that you need to revive, uh, whatever, there's a million different reasons, but the bottom line is ZFS can certainly save the day or week. You may have to go back uh, to a day before or a week before or an hour before and so on, and that's going to let you do it. It's pretty scary stuff because whenever you use ZFS, you're, you know, you, if you don't know it really well, it can be scary. You don't want to make a mistake, that, a mistake that all of a sudden all of your data is gone, and I've certainly approached it that way and have been very careful over time. Now, what we're about to do uh, it could probably be stated that it's safer to do by booting to an external uh, Ubuntu install, a USB install, Linux, whatever flavor you're using, and then carrying out the exporting and importing of your ZFS pools before you do any of these types of operations. And I won't argue with that. I've got documentation on that. Um, but I have not run into a problem doing this yet. And, uh, and so at this point in time, I think it's a safe, a safe method. And, uh, but I will tell you, I have complete backups of everything before I proceed. So let me minimize myself and walk you through it. Okay, command number one, we've got to list the snapshots that are on your computer. So we're gonna use the command ZFS list T snapshot. But before you do, I'd like you to take note that I am in the root directory. You wanna be in the root directory before you start restoring to a previous snapshot because if you are in fact in one of the directories that you're trying to restore, it can fail, the, it will fail the process and I don't know what the ramifications of that are. So this is a point where if you are booting from a CD uh, or a USB, you wouldn't have to think about that. And that may be the only thing that you have to think about when you're doing it with a live environment. So get to a root directory, then run this command. Now, this is going to take about one minute to show you all the snapshots on your computer. All right, here it comes. So here we have a list you'll see on the left-hand side. Uh, you know, it's going to depend on what you've named your pools. In my case, I have an R pool here. If I continue to scroll up, and I've got quite a few of them, you see the data pool listed on the left, and then further up yet is the boot pool. And it's my intention to restore every single uh, pool back to where it was earlier today for demonstration purposes. Now you'll notice that each, I'm using a ZFS auto snapshot and it takes these hourly and uh, some, call, some are called frequent, some are called uh, daily and weekly and so on. I'm going to go scroll to the bottom of this just to kind of give you an idea on some of those. Um, this is uh, when a playbook runs. I, I use a program called Ansible, and every time I run a playbook to update some things on my server, I manually insert a ZFS snapshot. Just in case anything went wrong on that run, I can restore it back. And there's your, there's your daily and so on. So let's, uh, let's, I need to make you aware of one gotcha here, though is the ZFS returns on that command are displaying dates and times in this fashion. And these dates and times are in a UTC format. That means they're gonna be X hours plus or minus your particular server's time. And I know I have been in the server seat at a client's location trying to restore it back to a particular area or, or revert back to a particular time frame and having to do math when you're in a mission critical situation as far as timing on this stuff is not something that you really want to have to do. You'll do it if you need to, but we've created a script that makes this process a little bit more user friendly. Okay, it's called SM List Snapshots. 
when you run it, it's going to ask you if you want a keyword to filter snapshots to. So if you had created manual snapshots, you might want to go ahead and, uh, and use that as a parameter. I'm going to use hourly just to eliminate a lot of that other stuff that appears in front of me. And now it's going to go ahead and list those snapshots for you. It still takes the same amount of time, but it's going to display it in a little more user-friendly fashion. Okay, so it's uh, given us the display. You can see right away that all the snapshots that are listed are in fact the hourly ones, so that gives us a little less to look at. Um, there's some, other, some more over here. That's our route, and if we continue going up, we'll see the uh, data pool. There they are. Data pool hourly and finally boot pool hourly at the top. Now, one of the things that you're also going to notice is you have this time over here, this date and time, which is the time that ZFS is giving us, the UTF, uh, UTC time. But if we go further over, you see our script has provided us some day, date, timestamps. Today's Thursday um, at, uh, that's, that one was at 7.17 this evening, where as opposed to dealing with 2 a.m., uh, tomorrow, which is what that would be saying. So this makes it a lot easier to figure out what you want to restore to. So in my case, I'm going to pick a time somewhere around 7 a.m. this morning. It's about 12 hours ago. And so I'm just going to run across and grab one of these. Now, I don't want to restore this entire line item. I really only want to restore uh, the portion of the string right there because that applies to everything on this server all snapshots, all directories that were taken at that time. Now, if you go to the, um, to the bottom of this script and look at its output, it actually tells you the above snapshots used this ZFS command and it displays it for you quite clearly. And it also tells you how you can roll them back. And so if you use this command right here, paste it down below, and then insert what is specific to you. So here, it's looking at, it's going to look grip for all, for data pool, CompuMat, SM data, we're going to have, we're going to remove that. Okay, so that's what it's going to grip for. We're going to get the list of snapshots. It's going to grip only those, and it's going to roll them back. This command won't actually roll it back. It's going to show you what it's about to do. If we append this bash uh, string, the pipe symbol in the bash, that will actually carry out the command. This one does nothing but show you what it's about to restore. Now that also takes the full minute or so because it's got to list the snapshots before we can filter them based on the grep command. Okay, so this shows us what it's about to do. It's going to carry out the command ZFS rollback recursively on each one of those directories. And that's what it's going to take to get the job done. Uh, I went too far. There it is right there. Okay. So it's filtered it down to what you see right there. Now remember, we're seeing snapshots currently that are all the, that are into 2000 and uh, excuse me, the 823, which is today. Once we get done with this root rollback, we're not going to see any of those because those snapshots didn't exist anymore. We're, we, we're, we're rolling it back. We are essentially turning back time. I'll give you one more example of this. I'm going to touch a file in the temp directory. I'll type in hello world and save it. All right, that file will not be there when we're done. Okay, very important, once again, you verify that you're in the root directory, which I am. And now we're going to run the very same command, only we're going to append the pipe symbol and the bash statement after it. And that's going to restore everything to this snapshot. Now, this is going to take about 10 minutes on my server. It's liable to be more or less, depending on how many snapshots you have on your server, but do expect it to take some time. And I hope you made sure you were in the root directory. I'm going to be back in 10 minutes. Of course, I'll, I'll fast forward this video so you won't have to wait along with me. 
All right, we're back. And uh, it took us probably about eight minutes. And we are uh, we're returned to a command line. There's no fanfare. You get nothing. It just puts you at a command line. Doesn't say successful. You get nothing. Now, at this point, you turn the system off. You don't change directories. You don't look for information. You don't do anything because your boot pool, everything has been affected. Moving around can cause you problems. I know from previous experiences, the best thing to do is just to pull the plug. And so in the case of a virtual machine, we're going to open up VirtualBox. If it's a physical machine, yeah, you can just pull the plug or hard shut off the uh, power button. I wouldn't even do a a, pow a shutdown where it shuts down the normal way. Don't take any chances, hard shut off. Stop, power off. Okay, that is the functional equivalent of pulling the plug. You can see it immediately goes to a power off state. Nothing there, let's reboot it. Okay, so this is the result of the script. Now, I am actually surprised. I didn't expect to see any that would have the 823 date, any of those snapshots still visible on the system. There are some. Um, the vast majority are not. As we see right here, it starts at 2017, our pool, and works its way up. All of the others are at that 20 or 0317 number that I expected to see. I'm thinking that the reason so, there are some remnants of more recent snapshots have to do with um, Ubuntu or ZFS having a lock on those because it wasn't booted to a native Ubuntu CD environment. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, unfortunately, that it, it didn't restore. I can tell you from previous experiences I've had no problem with databases, with Nginx, with web applications, with file shared data, or any of that reverting back to the snapshot that I've requested. So I'm not sure what those things that it had a lock on uh, might relate to. Let's just take a look at, I know, for instance, that my web cloud environment right here, I'm just going to go to that directory. and into the public HTML. And I don't have anything dated any newer, as I made changes in this directory today, and nothing in that indicates any changes today. All the changes are from, you see, and today is 8.22, not 8.23. That was a UTC thing. So I know that the re revert was successful. But there are a few remnants lying around, snapshot remnants, perhaps something, something else that I'm unaware of. So take from this what you can. The script works for us for the purposes that we have, but there may be something worth investigating to those who know a little bit more about it. My guess is it has something to do with lock files that the operating system is using that it wouldn't be using if we, in fact, had booted to the, um, the raw CD environment. Well, that's it. Thanks very much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I hope you will have found it to be worth it and you'll have some nuggets for your uh, ZFS endeavors. If you uh, want to have a front row seat in future videos, be sure to click the subscribe button. And uh, once again, because of the nature of ZFS and data and destruction and all that, no warranty of any kind for you following the examples I've laid out in this video or using the script that you download below. But I can tell you we have used it repeatedly with predictable results. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.